Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to wrap up for now. Of course, there's a lot more to learn when it comes to canine cognition, how animals learn, how they process information, and how do they use it. There's a lot of information on that. I could be up here for more than a year just speaking on that subject alone. But I kind of want to just wrap up a little bit about social learning uh, with our dogs. And at that point there, we can move on to something else and it'll stay fresh on your brain and you can use these terms uh, and apply them to your own household with your own dogs. And also when I explain why dogs do what they do and how to correct it or how to enhance it in later videos. So I'm just going to kind of put it all in a big box today. Uh, and I'm going to use the example of a dog becoming lost. Thousands of dogs every single year become separated from their owners one way or the other. They are either abandoned by their owners, kicked to the curb by their owners, or they find a way out of the gate system, out of the fence. Somebody comes over to your house to maybe do some utility work and they leave the gate open. Next thing you know, your dog is out on the streets. So there's thousands of dogs every single year that find themselves suddenly separated from their homes and from their owners. Many find their way back and I'll explain how that gets done today. Unfortunately, many of them do not. So we'll talk about that, that latter one later in, in future videos. But today I just kind of want to use all these terms and add one more to it at the very end here. And maybe by showing you a visual example, you'll kind of be able to tie them all in together. Okay, so here we go on a journey here. I'm going to go pretty fast for this. So keep up. You know, they always, they always said, can't keep up, take notes. So make sure you're taking notes here. All right, we have a dog who lives in this home right here, but his owner has taken this dog on many little excursions around the home, out into the woods, and there's trees out in these woods out here. That's my little drawing of a tree there. And while the dog was out there recently through latent learning, and I'm not gonna write all these out, it, it was able to discover that there were trails other than the ones that he and his owner had, had uh, occupied or had traveled upon. And down this trail, there seemed to be food down this trail. He could smell that there was food. So again, that's good to know. That's good knowledge to know. There's food down that trail there. Animals have passed down this trail. Dogs have passed, rabbits have passed, deer have passed, all down this trail. So one day, again, I'll use the example, utility guy comes over, nothing against utility guys, but this particular one left the gate open. And your dog wanders out the gate, goes over to this area that I've learned and become familiar with through latent learning. Remember, that's the learning in which I don't need an immediate reward. It's just good to know information and can definitely affect my survival. So animals just kind of plug it away in, inside their brain, just catalog it somewhere, store it for later use. I come out here and all of a sudden, bingo, there's that trail. I knew that trail was here and I think there's food down this trail. So your dog starts to travel down this trail. It goes a certain distance and off in the distance, it sees a few dogs. I'm just gonna write dogs over here. And there's like two of them. So he sees these two dogs and we call this local enhancement. So with this local enhancement, hey, there's dogs over there. I wonder what they're doing. I did think that there was food down here and perhaps maybe they have food. So your dog travels a little bit closer to them and then when it gets close enough, it is able to observe that yes, they do have food. They're eating trash. They're eating from a trash heap. So we call that stimulus enhancement. So now I have the desire to go over there and get a whole lot closer and see what these guys have to eat. Because after all, a couple of hours have gone by I'm kind of getting a little bit hungry. So he goes over here and he joins these dogs and they eat the trash. Well, the trash is consumed within a few hours and while the, your dog is with and in the company of these other two dogs, they travel a little ways and come across another home and out in front of that home is a trash can waiting to be picked up by the, maybe the trash service. Your dog observes one of the dogs opening the trash can, getting up on it, popping that lid and by golly, dumpster diving and pulls out a prize, more food. Well, this goes on for a couple of days over and over again, house after house. Here's these trash cans and there's this particular dog that you're in the company with climbing up on trash cans, throwing that lid open, diving down in there, grabbing some food and you learn from this. This is called goal-directed 
emulation. Ha! Ah, I can pop trash cans now. I do what that dog does. And I've learned that I can get in them as well, and I can get trash. So now weeks go by, and we're all dumpster diving, and we're hanging out. And then one of the dogs leaves, and you still are in the company of one of the other ones. Suddenly, this new house that you come upon has an owner who doesn't take too kindly to dogs getting in his trash can. So as you two start to get into this trash can out here, this owner comes running out screaming, get out of here, run up, get, get, get. He's a big guy wearing a hat, has a beard. And so you watch, at first startled, the other dog run, and runs very quickly. So you do the same thing. Okay, another day goes by, come across another house. Sure enough, at this house too, this particular neighbor doesn't take too kind to you getting in their trash can. This neighbor's a male as well. He comes running out. Get out of here. Maybe even fires off a shotgun or something. Get away from me. Now, the other dog runs, so again, you run as well. And we call this observational conditioning. Perhaps your owners yelled at you more than a few times, and typically humans at this point here have been providing you with food for a long time. So without being in the company of that other dog, you may have approached this person when they came out of their house. You may have tried to go up to them, tried to solicit food from them. But instead, this person yells, well, I'm okay, I've been yelled at before. But the other dog runs, so you run with it. And this happens over and over and over again. Well, finally, the two of you part ways. And you wander along, subsisting from house to house, trash can to trash can, using that skill set that you learned from the other dog. I now know how to get in trash cans. So I'm surviving, meager living it is, but nevertheless, I'm still surviving. And then one day, while wandering, bingo. Latent learning says, hey, this is familiar. Dogs travel by line of sight. They do. That, that telephone pole looks familiar with the backdrop of that particular white house. Huh, you ever notice this with your dog? On your way to the dog park, you're about a mile away and your dogs start whining. They're on their way to a dog daycare, about a mile away, they start whining. When you're on your way home, you've been gone all day long, about a mile away from your home, your dogs start whining, it's time to eat. Yeah. Latent learning, I've learned, I've tucked that away. This area right here means food. This area over here means a dog park I get to play. This area over here means a dog daycare I'm gonna to get to play. Latent learning, your dog comes here, travels up to here, wanders upon this area, through latent learning, remembers it. Follows the line of sight, recognition, signals, obstacles, signs, trees, you name it until it finally makes its way home. But here's the problem. You've moved as the owner. This dog's been gone for a couple months. You've moved. This is my home, I know this, but the person who comes out the door because it sees a stray in its yard happens to be a guy wearing a hat and a beard. Kind of like those other couple fellows that ran you off over here. And now all of a sudden, you run away. You run away. But the neighbors all see this, and they start posting signs saying, hey, there's a stray dog running loose in the neighborhood. Stray dog. And it happens to look like that dog that we saw on other posters before. Maybe this is that particular dog. At some point, the dog is seen so many times that the previous owners who did post out a reward for their dog, comes to the area, and you see them. You see them. But you don't go to them. Something is vaguely familiar, but you don't approach them all the way. And that's because individual recognition is the cornerstone of all complex societies. And in studying that, especially Dr. Frank DeWall and Peter Tack, uh, back in 2003 in their studies, found that animals need the entire sum of the body parts to be able to recognize someone. So during these months here, in which I've been looking for my owner, been running around this neighborhood here through latent learning, still popping 
up the lids on trash cans and surviving, my owners show up because they've heard that a dog that looks like their dog that became lost is running around this neighborhood. But in that time there, the climate has changed. You're wearing a beanie. You're wearing a big coat. Now the dog can't recognize you. I don't know you. In the studies that Dr. Franz de Waal did and, and Peter Tack, they took chimpanzees. And chimpanzees are very, very uh, observant. They will watch, they will mimic, they learn who's in their troop. And they happen to learn, they did a study actually called Faces and Behinds. And it's just a suggestive title because they learned that they actually took notice of the other chimpanzees' derrieres. They did, but they gave, they put pictures in front of them on a touch screen and they showed a chimpanzee derriere. And then right next to it, they put the face of a different chimpanzee that doesn't go with that derriere. They didn't recognize it. They didn't touch the screen and do what they were trained to do when they recognized it. Only when they put the face that did go with that derriere, did they now touch the screen. Pretty cool. Well, that went on to now, of course, a lot of times when you have studies like this, someone will say, well, hey, if those chimps can do it, I wonder what, what, what about dogs? And sure enough, same thing. So dogs, when they know you, how many of you have walked into your home and had your dog bark at you or even growl at you at first? Yeah, I've gone over this before in previous videos. You bet. It's they need the sum of all the body parts to be able to recognize you unless they can get close enough and then through your own individual scent that we all have, like a thumbprint, now they can place that and place you. But again, with visual learning animals, they learn with their eyes first. So eventually your dog does see you, you take off your beanie, you take off your coat, and now the dog comes to you and now the dog's home. Okay, so that's a pretty extreme example, but it, it is an easy example to follow through latent learning, through local enhancement, through stimulus enhancement, through goal-directed emulation, then observational conditioning. I become afraid because you become afraid. And anytime I see a man now going forward that has a beard and maybe a hat, uh, I start to become afraid of that individual person. And the owners, after they recover their dog back, start wondering, why? Why do you, why do you run when Uncle Bill comes over? Because Uncle Bill has the hat and the beard. And again, recognition, things of the sort. So that just ties it all up. I hope you enjoyed that little journey. It does explain how some dogs can, can become lost and find their way home eventually, how they'll survive while they're gone, simply using the part of the brain that's attached to social learning. Okay, guys, uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to start going over some other behaviors, and I'm going to start problem solving for a few people who have been sending in some really good questions. So we'll see what we can do to help these other dog owners out. If you found this information beneficial, you know what to do. Please share it. And if you have any suggestions of your own or any questions of your own, drop them either down in that Facebook feed or send them to me directly with Brian at a Y at TamingTheWild.com. Until tomorrow, make a great training day and be safe. See you then.